Okay, uh, it's another uh, another big week for us. Um, you know, had two two good weeks on the road, two really um, competitive practices uh, with both Tennessee and Detroit, and then the then the game. So, you know, this week it'll be a little bit different for us. We got to uh, get ourselves ready to go against Carolina, and um, short week, and try to you know maximize the opportunity that we have here and be ready against uh, obviously a very talented, uh, well coached, and um, you know, good fundamental football team, as uh, as as the Panthers always are. You know, Coach Rivera does a great job um, with that team. They're always you know, one of the least penalized teams in the league. Play very sound, uh, making earn everything. And extremely well coached with uh, you know, Coach Turner, Coach Rivera. You know, on the offensive and defensive sides of the ball, um, Blackburn special teams. So they you know, they got a good core group of guys and uh, very talented. Uh, so. It's be a good, good opportunity for us to um, get a little closer to a regular season routine and, you know, and be ready to go on Thursday night. You talk about a regular season routine. How much of that is <laughs> having the players look at Panthers personnel just to get familiar with them, even though you're probably not going to do much game planning? Yeah, well, sure. It's a lot different than the uh, last two weeks when we were actually practicing against the guys we were going to play against. Now we have to try to learn through them on film and simulate them in practice. And um, yeah, so that'll be a big, big change for what it's been. Um, obviously, we have to be ready to do that during the year, but this is this will be the first time really we've had to do that. Do you all have to? Is there also a message of there's only two weeks left of camp, like? Train starting to move, and we need to get going pretty soon. And you know, whatever you need to do, it the time is now to do it. I think everybody's well aware of that, Ben. Uh, Let's start living under a rock somewhere. <laughs> um, have you had a chance to meet with Josh Gordon this morning? I meet with the players every day. Are you be in good spirits and excited about his opportunity. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll release a statement on that. I have nothing to add to it. That's where we're at. Did he come in and, you know, or how would you describe it? Did he come in in good shape or were you pleased with how he maintained himself? Yeah, I think I've already covered all that. Bill, did, did we get a good... Did you get a copy of the statement? <laughs> we... I saw it on Twitter, but it's been a couple of weeks. Uh -oh. Yeah, sorry. I mean, I don't do my face, but I mean, we'll ha we're happy to give you a copy of it. It's really that's where I'm at. So I, I had one one question about the about the statement because it, it did feel like there was maybe a little bit of room there in terms of his future with the team, maybe some uncertainty. So, if he's available according to the league, is there any uncertainty as far as you're concerned as to whether or not he'll he'll be with the team? Well, I mean, he, he hasn't even been on the field yet. I think I covered it. That's there's nothing more to add. Is another line of questioning, or are we going to? Or can a witness step down now? Just curious. Hey, coach. I'm Henrik Levison from Danish TV. Could you uh, talk about uh, what you've seen from Yelda Pro all so far? Oh, similar to uh, um, all of our rookies. Um, you know, he's a hard-working kid. Um, he's gotten a lot better. Still has a long way to go. There's a lot of things he can improve on, but he's he's made progress. He's gotten a lot of playing time the last couple of weeks. Um, hopefully, he can benefit from that and you know continue to improve. Obviously, you also have had Seabass here, um, Volmer. What do you think it brings to a team to have a guy with a different culture from from overseas, from Europe? Yeah, I don't know. We're all different. There's a lot of different people in the locker room from all different, all different shapes, sizes, geographic, ethnic, religious, socioeconomic. I mean, it's all that's pro football. So it's a good mix. You know, he's a good teammate. Um, that's all really we can ask is teams that the people buy into the team and and support the team, um, regardless of where they're from or any of the other circumstances that we can't. None of us can really control. Um, that they be a part of the team and contribute to the team. That's all I ask. 
the wide, the wide receiver group on the whole, how would you assess the way that competition has unfolded to this point in camp with the receivers from that group? I think the guys that have been out there have improved. Um, still a lot of a lot of people we haven't seen uh, actively on the field, I and mean, we've seen them, but they haven't participated. So, to be determined. You hoping to see Julian back out there soon? Uh, I mean, he's yeah, he's been here every day. Yeah. If we change his status, we'll be the first to know. Appreciate that. <laughs> Bill, with they being the first of closed practices, things ramp up a little bit when the fans <coughs> things more private? Uh, yeah, I don't, not really. I mean, we do what we need to do. Try to be, look, we need to have as productive a practice as we can have on a, every single day. We don't really have that many of them, so our focus is on what we can do to get better. I don't see that changing. <coughs> Mike Izzardi came to camp a little bit late. Has he been able to catch on pretty quickly? Yeah, he's catching up. As you said, it's late. He's got a long way to go. Um, but he's he's catching up. Yeah. See, see what he's able to do this week. Dealing with an injury situation before he came, is that why he's kind of out there for so long? Yeah, I don't know. You'd have to ask the other 31 teams. I'm not sure. But what kind of improvement have you seen from Dorsett in his third year with you guys? Uh, well, I think he's, Phil's been a pretty steady player for us. And he's a smart kid. He knows the offense. He knows all the positions. Um, and he's been able to, to play in a number of critical situations for us through the years. Um, so either due to injury or game plan or you know, whatever the circumstances were. So I think he's you know been a solid player. He's a great kid. Works hard. Does everything we ask him to do. Do you see his approach maybe having an influence over some of the guys who are new here? He, he does, yeah, he does a good job. I think it's positive for everybody, new, old, coaches, players. Yeah, he comes to work ready to go every day. He's well prepared. He's smart. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Um, he tries to work on the things to make him a better player. I, mean, I think everybody respects that. Coach, what have you seen from uh, Terrence Brooks that's allowed him to carve out a role a little bit more on defense, on special teams? Well, we've given everybody an opportunity to perform uh, throughout training camp and practice or in preseason games and both. So uh, we'll see what roles everybody has. I don't know. I, I don't know what those are. Some of that will depend on game plan and um, matchups and so forth. So. We definitely haven't got to that point yet, so we'll just let everybody play and see how it goes. Do you get the sense that Tony Michelle is getting more comfortable in the passing game? Yeah, yeah. I think Sony's more comfortable with everything second year, like probably every other second year player is. It's always good to be through it, go through it the first time, learn from the experience, um, know what you need to do, and know how to improve it, anticipate things, see you know react quicker because you've seen it. Before, so yeah, but I think that's true of all all second all of our second year players. I asked because last year um, Adam Pierce was saying that training camp can play a pretty big role in helping a running back get comfortable with Brady or just in the offense in general. So is that we can say the same thing when you said that's true of this time of the year? Yeah, definitely, absolutely. Yeah, that's what we're out there for. So all those snaps of pass protection and recognizing coverages and zone coverage, man coverage, leverage, timing of plays and routes and so forth. Yeah, absolutely. He didn't have a lot of that last year. His foundation's much better this year because of it. Bill, you mentioned yesterday about um, scouting Byron Cower because of the situation in Scheme of Maryland. There was a limited sample of him pass rushing. So how, how do you go about gaining insight into his potential there as a pass rusher when there's only, you know, a few snaps of him doing that in college? Well, it's nothing we can do about college. So we teach him what to do here and um, give him instruction to do it. And when he gets an opportunity to do it, whether it's in practice or in one-on-one -on -one drills or in games, then we evaluate it and correct it and improve it. And uh, So, I mean, it wasn't like he never saw any pass plays in Maryland, but 
the position he played, his responsibilities, and kind of the game. It's just a different game at that level. Um, I think he's doing now a little bit different. And, you know, he's picking them up and still has a long way to go, but he's improving. Do you expect to have Derek Rivers to practice in a couple hours? Yeah, those injury reports, is that in two weeks? Yeah. I'm pretty excited to be able to give those out when they come out in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So, till then, we just, we have, we, we're not able to do that. But looking forward to those injury reports when, when we get to give those out. Make sure you guys all get a copy of them. And everybody be left behind. Bill, how's Keaton Crossing doing in his second year and his second season? Yeah. Similar to the other second year guys we talked about. Again, you know, small school player, big jump for him schematically. Um, and I'd say, you know, just culturally from you know, Western Carolina to the National Football League, it's just a big, you know, it's a big change in lifestyle and um, football and so forth. So, but he's, yeah, he's doing well. Well, with the short turnaround, does this give you a, another form of something to uh, evaluate just to see how players react to the short preparation and how they get their body physically ready and emotionally ready for uh, Thursday night? Yeah, it's definitely an opportunity for them to do that. Um, it's a situation that is similar to what we'll be facing um, in the regular season. So today's Monday. We were off yesterday, so there's an extra day there. But we'll be coming in on Monday and playing on Thursday night during the regular season. So that's from here to there is where we are now. Um, now, not everybody played Saturday night. Uh, a lot of players uh, that have a heavy, that took a heavy practice load had less of a game load. A lot of players that had a lesser practice load took a heavier game load. So it's it's not all quite apples to apples here, but uh, but it is a short week. It is an opportunity for uh, everybody to to get on a accelerated schedule that we need to we need to be able to get on at some point here uh, that we'll have to get on during the regular season. And so it's a good good time to to do it, whether it's physically. Um, as you said, mentally, preparation, emotionally, being ready for the game, uh, both as a coach and a player. Like, this is a good opportunity for us, and uh, we'll take advantage of it and try to prepare ourselves the best we can. Bill, do you think uh, Brady needs to play Thursday night to get ready for the regular season? Well, as always, we'll do what's best for the football team, for each player and for the team. Lance Kendricks has been back on the field for a couple of days now. What have you seen from him in the, in the month or so that he's been here? Well, Lance is an experienced player. Uh, you know, he's been in, in this offensive system with Josh and with the Rams. Uh, so he, it's not the same, but it's similar. Certainly has a good background on it. He picks things up quickly um, and has you know quite a bit of experience in the league anyway. So he's done well, and it's good to get him back out there last week. Good to see him have a chance to play against uh, Tennessee. And you know, we'll build on that going forward this week. Bill, you, you've uh, been asked about a handful of second-year guys. Danny Shelton's always been a second-year guy, but it's a second year with you. Um, how have you noticed him handling everything that's been, been thrown at him here this summer? Good. Good. Um, same thing. I mean, I think he's a lot more uh, comfortable with the scheme. Um, we have more experience with him as a player. I think there are certain things that uh, we can do to – um, put him in good position to be productive um, and he's worked on things that he knows he needs to do in our scheme that may be a little bit different from other schemes that he's played in so um, you know, he's better prepared um, he's in good condition he's, he's at good camp uh, and a good spring so you know, glad he's here I think he'll help us do, do you notice even after a full year with a guy that you will maybe learn some new things about a particular player in terms of how they fit in the scheme, for instance, or um, sure, something along yeah. those lines. I think there's always a period of growth. I mean, you know, that was one player for 20 years, and I think, you know, there's still, a, you know, growth. And Tom and I talked about, you know, a lot of things the last couple of weeks just relative to the offense, plays, evolution of different things that we're seeing, how to how to adjust to them, how to handle them. Um, so, I, you know, I think that's an ongoing, certainly if we if we do it, I would think you know, it would be true of any player or any coach for that matter. 
it's an evolving game. The thing just changes every year. It changes week to week. So I don't think you're ever just stuck in one spot. It's okay. What sort of role did the senior role play in, in Jacoby Myers' evaluation? It's in one piece of a big puzzle. It's like everything else is. I mean, some players play in that game, some players don't, but it's, I mean, in the end, you take the mosaic of all the, all the things that you have, all the information you have on players, and put it all together. Some pieces might be a little larger than others, but I mean, in the end, you got a lot of, you got a lot of information there that you have to just try to evaluate as a composite and put a, put a value on it. All right. Yep. Thank you.